I think this is, this is my second TFCon in the US. Um, and I did the Canadian one as well. Um, so I don't come over too, too often, actually. So it's really nice to see everybody. And um, it's been great meeting people at the, at the table. Um, yeah, we're about to enter like the year seven of the, of the more than meets the eye lost light. <laughs> what a nice room. Let's just let's just stay here. It's, yeah, it's, it's nice to see so many people with amazing taste. That's what that's what I like about it. Um, yeah, year seven. So, like in, uh, in in TV series terms, which is what we always do with the with the comic, uh, that's like uh, that's like a good run, isn't it? That's like season seven. That's that's when you either get really indulgent or you take really big risks. So we'll do both. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So I mean, my my journey with with the comic or with Transformers started back in 2010, or really 2009 was when I was sort of um, asked to help Nick. Roach out on Last Stand of the Wreckers. And uh, yeah, shout out to Nick. Thanks, Nick. And it was all a bit, it was all, it was all, it seems a long time ago. And, and, the, and you know, the IDW universe was, you know, three, four, four years old, five years old. Um, and uh, what they wanted to do is they wanted to give it a bit of a soft reboot. And they were going to, they wanted, to, they, uh, it was Andy Schmidt was the editor at the time, and he had a, he had a plan to sort of target different demographics. Um, with three new series, or th um, so there was going to be the Bumblebee miniseries that was aimed at the at younger readers, because that you know Bumblebee being a pop culture icon and stuff, and this would have been after the first movie, so that was a Bumblebee miniseries, um, and the Wreckers, as, as as he later said to Nick and I, Wreckers was aimed at the hardcore fans, you know it was it was going to scratch your riches, um, and so we were perhaps Nick and I were given a bit more, um, well we, but maybe we were indulged, we were allowed to do. Um, sort of stuff that would certainly appeal to, um, to to the longer term fans, and which would delve a bit more deeply into the sort of the the, the Transformers mythos. So that was Wreckers, and uh, that went really well for us. You know, creatively, we enjoyed doing that. And then we just had to wait and um, and wait to see whether there'd be any other projects coming along. Um, and in my case, um, the next thing I did, my first solo story, was the Chaos Theory, um, which was which was. Thank you. Um, Oh. Being British, I just don't get used to this stuff. You know, so. Are you being is that the mass sarcasm from the audience? Um, so Chaos Theory was came about because um, in Mike Costa's ongoing at the time, Megatron had surrendered, and he was in, in Autobot. Um, he was in, in jail, um, and it gave me an opportunity to do something as a as a long term fan that I'd always wanted to see happen, which was him and Optimus just to have a, a head to head. Um, that in and of itself was exciting for me as a writer, just to have. And, and in one, one iteration of the story, it was just, it was just dialogue. To, it was just the two of them in a room together. It was going to be a one-shot, actually. The, that, that chaos theory was going to be a one-off. Um, it was going to be mainly sort of in a room, centered around their conversation. And then it became. A, then I then I fleshed out the pitch, and, and Andy wanted it to become a two-parter. Mm -hmm. And you don't really have two-part miniseries. It's neither a miniseries or a one-shot, so it became folded into, into the ongoing. Um, so as well as just the thrill of having them talk things through, it was an opportunity within the context of the IDW continuity to explore what Megatron actually wanted to happen, what was, what was his goal, and what was the Decepticon's goal in, in that continuity. And although when I wrote it, oh, no, no, when I wrote it, I did know more than Mitsuya was happening. Um, but I didn't really approach it thinking this is going to be what someone else has des described as a backdoor pilot for the series. So it wasn't intended that clinically, but it did end up becoming sort of the, the, the foundation stone for pretty much everything that came after, especially when you know, Megatron defected. So when I wrote Chaos Theory, no one had any idea that Megatron was going to um, become an Autobot. So Chaos Theory was written, however, knowing that More Than Meets the Eye would launch in January uh, 2012. So John Barber, new, new writer, became my new editor. So we worked on Death of Optimus Prime together. And that really was the beginning of what they call Phase 2. Um, again, again, a kind of a soft reboot. Um, and then flash forward to, whatever was it, 57 issues of More Than Meets the Eye and an annual and some spotlights and then Lost Light with some problematic renumbering. But there we go. Um, yeah, and we're sort of, and, and I'm, I'm 
I think a combination of arrogance and naivety is what made me plan so far ahead in terms of the stories. Um, because actually, when, when it was commissioned, you know, the, the idea was, well, well, we'll go for 12 issues. Same with, same with Robots in Disguise. We'll, we'll do a 12 issue arc, and then if it's popular, we'll go on beyond that. Um, and then early indications were good, so 12 issues became 16. Hasbro were happy, so Dark Cybertron came along as, to celebrate the 30th. And then it was sort of onwards and upwards for, for John and I, really, in terms of the scope of the stories and the, and the ambition in terms of in terms of being able to say, okay, well, well, we'll plant something there and we'll go back to that in three and a half years' time. You know, it's not something which happens too often in comics, um, I now realise. But, you know, it, it worked for us. So, yeah. So, um, Lost Light issue 10 is out soon. I, I yeah, exactly. I don't know why. I don't know why it's taking so long. Um, <laughs> but it's, yeah, we should be a bit further ahead by now. Um, I hope we can catch up. So, issues 10, 11, 12 is the... Mutineers trilogy. Um, so that's a return. Has anybody got a getaway T-shirt on in the room? Can we have a show of hands? Actually, who's who's who's? <laughs> so if I if I ever if I ever had to sneak out, I would just throw a question about getaway into the audience, and then when you're fighting each other. <laughs> Um, <laughs> on, on <laughs> be, best captain on one level may not be too far off the truth actually but we'll see um, and what would have happened if we hadn't had the, if we hadn't had the relaunch um, or the, the, the switch to a new title then it probably would have been dying of the light straight into um, sort of the, the mutineers story and then back to Necroworld